understanding the difference between analytical and numerical solutions is crucial. First and foremost, analytical solutions use pure mathematical equations to solve for one value, which is always correct and the true solution to the equation. Numerical solutions, on the contrary, use iterative calculations to find the closest value. This might not be super accurate, but it can be good enough depending on the scenario and will get us close to the analytical solution. Why then do we care about numerical solutions? Sometimes the analytical solution may not be possible to calculate, or perhaps it's just extremely difficult to do so. In which case, numerical solutions offer an easier way to get close to the solution. Let's look at an example. Let's take the equation f of x equals x squared plus 2, and we're trying to find the local minimum or maximum of this function. To do that, we've been classically trained to set the derivative equal to 0, and this is the analytical solution approach. We find that f prime of x equals 2x, we set that equal to 0, and we solve for x equals 0. We'll plug that back in to the original expression, and we'll see that f of x equals 0 equals 2. That gives us our minimum y value of 2 as our analytical solution. Let's turn to the numerical solution in MATLAB. To find the numerical solution, I've defined a matrix of x values, in fact 100 of them between the values of negative 2 and 2, because I know the minimum value of this function will be around 0. I've calculated the y values using x squared plus 2, which is our equation that we used previously, and I'm going to plot this and scale the y limit between 0 and 8. I've put the grid on as well for ease of visibility. Lastly, we'll have this matrix of y values, and we can simply run the min function on that array of y values to spit out the minimum value of the function, and that will serve as our numerical solution. If we run this, We'll get a plot out, and we'll have a min value in our command window here. Let's take a look at the plot. Here we see exactly as we expect the minimum value occurring at 0, and it looks like the y is about equal to 2, yet the min value in the command window is 2.0004. Why is that though? Right, this goes back to the fact that we're iterating in our numerical solution and we're not using the pure mathematic formula. If we look at what values we're actually evaluating at, we first check our x matrix. In our x, we evaluate only close to zero. Here we evaluate at negative 0.0202 and then positive 0.0202. We never evaluate at zero and thus we're never going to get that exact value of 2 as our y. We come and look into the y here, and we look, our values will get very close to 2, but never be quite exactly 2. Here we see them decrease to 2.0004 in the 50 and 51 index, and then it increases away on both sides thereafter. But are we close enough? Right? Our value is 2.004. In most cases, that would be okay, especially for a simple equation like we're solving in this. But in sometimes real world problems would require you to get even closer to the solution. And what do you do? You can choose to iterate over more x values in this case, right? Get your domain to be a larger set of values and evaluate on those values. Let's say we want to do. We were at 100 before, and now we're moving to 10,000 values. If we run this, here we see the minimum value actually matches our analytical solution to the numerical solution. One final comment on the numerical solution. We get closer to the analytical solution with more iterations. That means that as iterations increase, our accuracy increases. And we saw that when we went from 100 values of x that we're evaluating on to 10,000 values of x. 
But what's the cost behind this? And the reality is, it's computational resources. We are demanding a lot more computational time to do those more iterations. And it's a direct trade-off between the iterations and computational cost and how much more accurate our solution can become. Let's look one more time in MATLAB to see this difference in computation time it takes to get our accurate answer. MATLAB has a function that allows us to calculate the time it takes to run between tick and talk. If we run this, we see the elapsed time is about 0.3 seconds. If we change the number of iterations to 10,000 to get our numerical solution closer to the analytical solution and run this, we'll see the time has increased to about 0.33 seconds, though we do get the analytical solution. This may not seem like a big deal, going from 0.2 something seconds to 0.3 something seconds. But imagine that we've got a much longer script that's taking days to compute. Maybe we're going now from two days to three days. That computational time is extremely valuable to any corporation or even independent project where time is crucial. I hope you've got something out of this. Thanks for watching and have a great week.